Hey, what's up guys? It's Liam or Weagle on your Overwatch back with a new video today. I want to talk about Top 500's Grandmasters, the mistakes that they still make, but also the refinements they've made to their game in order to win more games and how they work. Now, you would think that there was amazing, incredible strats at Grandmasters and Top 500, but I managed to get into a game that was just absolutely beautiful. All the way through, it was how I would love to play Overwatch all of the time. It was almost like a six-stat game. I got into a game with Shadow and some amazing top 500 players and Grandmasters and around that rank you would just think that everything's going to be perfect all the time but they're not they're not in a lot of the games but this one is a little bit of an exception so a bit of context in the first round I was playing DPS fairly well but I had to swap off because no one wanted to go to Lucio we had another Masters guy on our team who also wouldn't go Lucio so I said well you guys are better than me you're top 500 so I threw on Lucio just to move my team around a little bit. Now, the only thing I really noticed about this game, in short, is that people just do the basic things all the time. There's communication, but not too much. It's not cluttered. People are just communicating things nicely. People are moving as a team and as a unit, and they're also focus firing. They're taking team engagements with ultimates, and really, that's it. That's all they're doing in this game, and I'm going to break some more of it down for you guys right now. So you'll see that at the start, I speed out as Lucio, and I don't actually play a great Lucio in this game. I just try and move people around, and I'm fortunate enough that when I catch deaths, we've already won the team fight a lot of the time. As we're approaching the first team fight, I make a mistake and try to get really, really cheeky and get behind the enemy team and boot them off in a second. But as you'll see here, I think this is really important to show you guys a difference between a Masters player, a, a Diamond player, and someone that's genuinely really really good at the game. Look at where my Roadhog is right now. He's instantly gone on a mad flank. He's not with his team, ready to hook something that dies the backline. He's not trying to shred the Ryan shield. I would doubt that this guy's very high into Masters because this is a huge, common Roadhog mistake that people make. And this is the guy that wouldn't go Lucio and wanted to play DPS. Fortunately, we got him on Roadhog. He goes behind them and he doesn't get a hook, so I run in and try and save him, but he dies for it. He dies for that because it's a massive mistake. In the meantime, because I've tried to save my teammates, my team have gone in because they try to initiate with a Roadhog 2. It gets messy. I try to boot the Rhine off. He gets bubbled. Everything's a little bit of a mess. I get killed, but because our team is so good and we're even in the frag battle, they manage to frag out from here and I can speed us in, etc. But instantly straight away there, you see the difference between what our Grandmasters and Top 500 players are doing and what the Masters player on my team is doing. He's making a massive misplay, he's going out of his way, and he's already died in the next fight too, where my team are still alive because once again he tried to go on a mad flank. We do manage to frag out and our Zarya carries... We also pop our Genji ult. I should have been on speed here, but it's Shadow. He doesn't mind. And I don't play Lucio, so I'm going to make mistakes throughout. So in the next real team fight, you'll see that we're gearing up to actually fight the enemy team. In a normal game, you would see the Roadhog again off on a flank, who we've convinced to stay with the team at this point, and also people all over the place. But what actually happens is we're together. The enemy team try to come to the choke point. We get a quick frag, and it does get traded, but that means I can just put on speed boost. We can chase the enemy team into their spawn and do enough damage to, in order to win the team fight. And what's even more interesting here, and this never happens, is... Someone gets in our back line and we turn around and we all go and focus fire him and take him out of the fight. Further extending that time we have on the point because we've made the enemy trickle again. Now the next fight is actually a team wipe and it's again we're waiting for the enemy team to come to us but we make sure we get the initiation first. The grav comes out, the speed comes on, we get drop the B, we get everything. Everything happens at the right time. Everything happens perfectly. Even though I already said it I feel like I need to emphasize a point. Boostio coming in. The point that needs to be made really guys is that yes there's some massive mechanical skill advantage here but when a game is known as an esport or a competitive game like CSGO is in, in matchmaking people learn the fundamentals but as Overwatch is in this mid space between being this very competitive and this very casual game because it's more approachable and the heroes are great it's got a lot of whimsy it's a great game and it doesn't just always feel like a hardcore shooter but the thing is it is that game so a lot of people don't even use these fundamentals up to Grandmasters and I had to get into a game with pros and top 500s in order to even see this a little bit. And that is a little bit of a sad story that I hope gets fixed as the game progresses and becomes more of an esport and hopefully more competitive. Because I can guarantee you, you guys and a lot more people would enjoy playing this way. Because you're coordinated and not playing selfishly. It's selflessly. It's anything you can do to win. 
I die as Lucio many times in places I shouldn't do, but because I've already got my team into the right positioning, we can frag out the fight from there. I didn't play a good Lucio, I don't play him, but that doesn't matter because we played as a team and the refrags on the things in our backline and the alt engagements are where they should be. Now in the next round there's something else I really need to show you guys and this is super super important and it doesn't just apply to the Roadhog player, it applies to anyone playing the game but once again the guy that's in low masters on our team on Roadhog who is such a carry hero you have to be with your team you have to be shredding the enemy lines you're getting hooks he's one of the biggest impact heroes in the entire game he's on a flank again. Now this is a, a tiny fundamental, this is something that people know at the lowest levels in the game, just to regroup and stay with your team. Our Roadhog is on the other side of the map versus top 500 players, and once again, he's trying to effectively throw the game. He's behind them trying to get a hook, he thinks he's trying to help, but he's completely out of position. And again, a tiny fundamental difference in his playstyle to what the top 500s do. He's a great Roadhog. He can hit the hooks, but that's no good if you're dead all the time. If he was with the team, this guy would more likely be way more towards the top 500. Because if he always plays Roadhog like this, he's definitely throwing games. So I've spent a lot of time in this video talking about fundamentals. And I, I want to go through the five fundamentals that these guys are implementing to their game. Now, yes, there is a mechanical skill factor to hear. Our Genji is absolutely amazing, of course, he's one of the best in the world, but there's a lot of people even in Diamond and Masters that are incredibly skilled on heroes. I've played Hansos that don't miss, that aren't on Smurfs at Diamond. I've met these people and they do exist, but there's a lot of fundamentals that people don't apply to the game and this is what they are and this is why these people are so highly ranked. Yes, they're good at their heroes, but the fundamentals are more important. Back to the Ryan example, or Lucio, or even Zarya, not necessarily incredible incredibly mechanically skilled heroes, but when you just play them in the right context, that's where you get your value. So, the simple things these people are doing at these ranks, guys, they're regrouping. They're just regrouping with their team when they need to and fighting when they need to. They also stay as a group in team fights. We're mostly playing a death ball. Stay as a team if that's what you're running. If you aren't running that, you need to be diving the same heroes. You need to be going for the same targets. Back to the earlier well example, we're in the team fight at the front line where we're winning it. But our Anna's being harassed in the back line and the whole team turn around to save her. Now there's some communication in this game, but it isn't all spoken. A lot of it is just simple shout outs, simple things of communication on when we should be initiating and when we should back up and regroup. It really is that simple. And I will play some of it at the end of the video. Synergy with teammates is just an automatic thing. Knowing your hero, who you synergize with, who your alt stacks as well should be with. If you're Zari, you need to make sure there's going to be follow up on that. This isn't communicated. This is simple synergy stuff you should know about your hero. Just like our Roadhog that should know he shouldn't be flanking. And that's the difference between him being a Master's Roadhog and a Grandmaster's one. Is if he isn't flanking this with his team hitting the hooks, he's going to win more games. It's that simple. Nothing to do with mechanics. It's just synergy and knowing your hero. Alt stacking is something that's done very, very well here. We always alt stack as a team to make sure we wipe the enemies. That's what the enemies are also trying to do to us as they are also top 500s but what's the most important fundamental is when you engage on all of these different things when you engage in an all stack or a team fight or a death ball you have to engage at the right time you communicate it minimally just say look we're engaging now we speed boost and we go and also on defense when we're defending the point and the enemy team are coming we make sure we initiate on them first to have the advantage now these are very very simple concepts these aren't to do with mechanical skill they're simply game sense and when you play a game like CSGO and you rank up through the ranks these things become more and more apparent all the way to the top level however in Overwatch currently you have to get all the way to the top of that game just to see these fundamentals that you should be seeing at mid tier ranks if not lower ranks too at least start seeing some aspect of these things so guys that's just about everything Working on your fundamentals a lot of the time is more important than working on individual skill or trying to carry the game. Playing as a team is the best way. Meta is meta because it's the best way to play. It doesn't always matter in solo queue, but when you're playing against a team running meta properly, it's going to be very, very difficult to not run meta against that. And that's why these people at this level have all of these tricks up their sleeves to counter it and do these different 
things. I'm in a second going to let you guys listen to some of the communication. The only issue with it is there is some keyboard noise, but I hope that doesn't bother you too much. I just wanted to let you guys know that there is communication, but it's simple and to the point and accurate. Let me know what you guys think. Be sure to check out our Twitter, our Discord, and our Twitch, where we stream every single day. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed. The comment section is the place to let us know any questions or what videos you'd like us to cover next time. Have a great day as always. Take care and peace, people. Feel free to charge if you think you can get me. Oh well. Big nade, I think. Keep back pedal to the right side of the building. Nice. Come in, come in, left side, uh, right. I'm dead. Hog oh, me. Nope, he has no ammo. Okay. Hog is sleeping next to you, Ryan. Let's get him. Go play, guys. Go play down, go play. Good job, guys. I'll, I'll show his loose with you. Good job. Good job, Okay, let's do nano blade. Next fight. We don't have to. Uh, they won't have anything. Up. And just go in and kill them. Alright, let's try. If we Come start back, losing the fight, we do it. Okay, okay. I can sleep right for the net chat. I'll get your... He's sleeping! Oh. Go for the net chat. Go, go, go. 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 Come, 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 come. Where's our run? Beautiful, dude. McCree behind, low. McCree behind, guys. He's low. I got Graviton for next fight. Hog, um, we can call, let me and the Hog combo, okay? Don't use. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hog might die, I need you to move right. Thank you. Get ready. Yes, I almost got it, 97. Okay. Come, 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 I go. Soldier behind. Zara? Sleeping. Soldier sleeping behind. Good job. Okay, now we use Nano Blade. Come, uh, wait for Lucio, come back and pick, guys. Come, come, my shit.